Yo, what's up guys? So right now we have two devices. This is the One X Player Mini Pro, and this is the new but old, I always say that, Loki Max by AYN. So we're gonna be comparing these two devices just to determine, you know, what's the differences, what's the similarities, and determine which one we can consider to be the best between these two devices. So before you run to the comments to uh, talk about another device, Stick around and I think you're gonna be interested by the comparison between these two devices. So let's not waste any time. The first thing we're going to look at is the screen. So as you can see, the screen between these two devices is similar size, but they actually look different um, just because of the aspect ratio and the actual size of the display. So this One X Player Mini Pro is a seven inch display and the AYN Loki Max is a six inch um, display. So this is 1200p and this is 1080p. So there's a few differences. So the aspect ratio is different. This is 16 by 10 and this is 16 by nine. So of course you're going to get a larger display with the One X Player Mini Pro. That's just because it's an inch larger and also it has a, um, a larger aspect ratio. So it is taller. Now the AYN Loki Max, still a great screen. It is smaller, of course, that makes it um, more compact, but we'll get to the design and the ergonomics um, in a little bit, so stay around for that. But of course, at these sizes, you're not really gonna determine any difference in pixel density. They're both gonna look equally sharp and uh, equally crisp. I will say um, the brightness is also comparable between these two displays. As you can see, they're both at max brightness. Um, and you can definitely see that the brightness is similar between the two. Now, colors and contrast are slightly different. The um, AYN Loki Max is slightly um, greener, um, it's slightly warmer. The um, One X Player Mini Pro is slightly cooler. That's just in their stock um, um, factory screen calibration settings. I haven't adjusted the screen in any way. So this is to give you an idea of how the screen looks. I will say, that it really comes down to personal preference as far as which um, display you prefer. Now the One X Player Mini Pro, the screen is larger. So if you want a larger display in a um, pretty small handheld, the One X Player Mini Pro is a good option. Being seven inches, it is um, definitely a compact device compared to the AYN Loki Max, which is six inches, is not uh, much difference in size. And just to you know confirm that, let's uh, measure these devices. 10.2 inches, 10.2 inches across, and the AYN Loki Max is 9.7 inches across. So not even a full inch difference, not even a full inch difference in um, length. Let's look at the, the width. 4.1 inches, as you can see that there, 4.1, right? So you have 4.1, and then the width of the Loki Max is, the max width is, so the max width is 3.8. So not even an inch um, difference as far as length and height, and then the width is similar as well. So the max width of the Loki Max is 1.3, as you can see that there, that's the max width. Let's just confirm, 1.3. 1.4 at the um, thickest point and then the um, 1S Player Mini Pro is also 1.4 so around the same um, thickness so as far as the dimensions goes the 1S Player Mini Pro offers a one inch larger screen but is not an inch larger in any dimension so that is um, something to consider the fact that it is a larger screen but not much larger as far as um, overall footprint. As you can see here, um, it's not much thicker. It is thicker, um, but not by much. I will say that since this is completely flat, it will stand up on its own. The um, Loki Max is more round and it's slightly thinner in the middle section here. So it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna stand up. I count that as a feature because you technically don't need to stand because the One X Player Mini Pro will just stand up on its own because the bottom is completely flat as you can see there. So that is one feature, <laughs> that's one point for the uh, One X Player Mini Pro. Speaking of standing up, let's talk about the design. So we talked about the, I guess the dimensions, so we don't have to touch that, but let's just talk about the overall design and de design language between these two devices. 
Now I will say that they are both um, uh, pretty standard, pretty simple designs. There's not much really going on besides the RGB lighting on the devices. Now the Loki Max, I would consider to be, I guess, one of the most basic designs in a um, handheld PC. There's no, um, there's no logos. There's no, I mean, on the front, there's no logos. There's no sort of lines or designs. It's pretty much just a black shell with a screen in the middle and the controllers on the side. There's nothing really that stands out. If you were to turn off the RGB, it would pretty much just um, look like a standard device. So if you turn off the RGB, you can see it's pretty basic in its design. And I do quite like that. The only thing that stands out is the um, the logo on the back, which is RGB. So let me just turn it on so you guys can see it. The logo on the back, which lights up. So that is um, good to see. But other than that, there's like nothing that really stands out on the design. And that is something that some people like because it's, it's um, a, de a design that it doesn't really stand out. It's not really um, offensive, quote unquote, in any way. I don't think anyone, anyone will look at this and say, I don't really like that design. Now, as far as the One X Player Mini Pro goes, you can see we have the One X Player logo on the front here. We have some orange accents. Um, so the buttons are orange. We have some orange on the speakers here. And then the ring around the joysticks is also orange. Now, as far as I guess the overall design, the One X Player Mini Pro does seem to be a little bit more gamer focused or gamery, whatever the word is, it's more gamer-esque. Um, we have like a uh, text up here, gaming computer for hardcore gamers, hardcore gamers. Like It's like, it's really trying to be a gaming handheld, but I will say the design isn't too crazy over the top, um, like something like the AOK Zoe. I just pulled that out here. The AOK Zoe really leans into those lines and, and design and, and text and accents. So this is something that is really leaning into its sort of design identity. But the uh, One X Player Mini Pro is more subdued and just has a few orange accents. Let's talk about the, um, the ports. So one thing as far as the design goes, I do have to give a slight nudge to the One X Player Mini um, Pro as far as the design and the ports because there are a few extra ports. Now if we look up here, we see we have a USB-C, a USB-A, and then on the bottom we have another USB-C port. Now what's great about the um, One X Player Mini Pro is the fact that both of these ports are USB 4. So that means they are compatible with eGPUs and the full, the full um, 40 gigabits uh, protocol on both of these ports. Now where I guess the um, Loki Max sort of falls behind in that regard is the fact that there's only a single USB-C port on the bottom. Now it is USB 4, so it does enable those same protocols, but there's only one port on the bottom. So that means um, you're limited in, as far as like the docks that you can use. You can't really use docks designed for the Steam Deck or the um, um, RG Ally or any other device that has like a, a port on the top where you can put it in a dock and then have the cable on the top. It's not really compatible with those docks. Now I will say um, where the AOA and Loki Max gets a point back is the fact that it has an SD card slot uh, on the bottom here. That's not something that the um, One X Player Mini Pro has. So it doesn't have an SD card slot at all. So that's something that we consider to be a win for the AOA and Loki Max. But where the, um, where the One X Player Mini Pro swings back is the fact that it does have a full 2280 uh, SSD, which means you're going to be able to expand your storage much more easily than the um, AOA and Loki Max that has a 2242 SSD, which I think maxes out at two gigabytes uh, at the time of recording this in 2023. So you can put up to an eight terabyte SSD in the One X Player Mini Pro without any issue that's available today. And this current device does have a two terabyte SSD, while this one has a one terabyte SSD that I did upgrade myself. So this technically has twice the storage, even though it doesn't have an SD card slot, the biggest SD card you can get is one terabyte. So if I put a one terabyte uh, SSD in here, I would just be matching the storage on this one. So it's not really a big deal because you can um, get more storage for cheaper um, on the uh, One X Player Mini Pro. So it kind of evens out. If you absolutely need an SD card, then you know that you you know you don't want to consider the um, Loki. I mean, you don't want to consider the One X Player Mini Pro because it doesn't have an SD card, but it does have a 
USB. So you can put like a mini USB in there. They have mini USB sticks that can go up to 512 gigabytes that are very small, like the size of a dongle. And you can have that in there that can serve as your SD card, or you can even put an SD card reader in there that has low profile. So you do have the options. I will say I will give the win to ports to One X Player Mini Pro, because even though it doesn't have an SD card slot, it does have an extra USB-C port on the top and bottom, and it has this USB-A port. I just give, I love to have that USB-A port because I can put peripherals in there, I don't have to worry about taking out my other slots, and I can charge from the top or from the bottom, and I can use all the docks, so docks that support the top and docks that support the bottom are good to go. So as far as ports go, I gotta give the edge to the One X Player Mini Pro, even though um, the SD card feature is great um, for some people, and that's something that you should consider. Now, as far as the design goes, it really is personal preference. You, they both have this um, RGB. This um, has RGB, a strip on the side and on the uh, joysticks. This just has a big RGB like bar on the side, and it does look um, it does look very very nice. So let me just change the color here so you guys can see that make it something a little bit more interesting and you can see the RGB on the side here so it does actually look pretty good in your hand you kind of get the RGB glow just coming out ever so slightly it does look good in the dark same with the um, Loki Max you get that RGB kind of on the side um, and yeah if you like the joystick then you're gonna like the Loki Max if you like just sort of like get out of the way and be on just the side you're gonna appreciate the um, I guess one X player mini pro, but they both have that RGB that you're going to love and you get your extra frame rate boost. You know, RGB has that power. Now, as far as the design goes, let's look at uh, some size comparisons between these devices and some other devices that are um, on the market today. Okay. So the first size comparison is between the AOK Zoe A1 Pro. This is a fairly large device. It has an eight inch um, screen. So we can see the size here. Let's first compare it to the One X Player Mini Pro. As you can see here, the size difference between the One X Player Mini Pro and the AOK Zoe A1 Pro. Now let's compare it to the Loki Max. As you can see, this is an eight inch screen versus a six inch screen. So you get two inches um, more screen on the One X player. I mean, on the AOK Zoe A1 Pro, and I will say um, it is rather large, but if you know me, you know that the AOK Zoe A1 Pro is my go-to device. I do appreciate the large screen and larger device just for ergonomics. So we're gonna talk about ergonomics um, uh, after this size comparison segment. So here it is, eight inches versus six inches and Neo 2S, as you can see here, size isn't that much different because this is also a seven inch screen. So you get a seven inch screen and size isn't much different between these two devices, slightly longer and slightly wider, but not by much. Very similar size devices here. They are both seven inch screens, um, 1200p. So they are very similar in size here, as you can see, very close in size. Any difference is this is like slightly more round and this is like slightly more uh, straight here and then angled at the top. But as far as the the length goes and the the width, very similar, very close. Here we have a seven inch 1080p screen versus a seven inch 1200p screen. So the the RZ Ally is slightly longer. There's also slightly wider here. RZ Ally does. Uh, come out ever so slightly more so it is longer so it does sort of stretch out that um, it distributes the, the weight a little bit more than the uh, one X player mini pro now let's check it out versus the Loki max we can see here 1080p six inches versus 1080p seven inches so this one is uh, like an inch an inch um, longer and also it does seem to be much wider here so we can see you can see we line it up at the bottom there is like a good half an inch more at the top um, so yeah it is it does make this look much smaller now let's look at the the big chungus device here this is the biggest device I have right now this is the one X player 2 look at this thing 8.4 inches 2k screen versus a six inch 1080p screen look at the size of this device 
this device you can remove one of the controllers and it's still larger than the Loki Max. Look at this. You can take off one whole controller and it's still larger. That is just that is just amazing. That is just amazing. Look at that. And now let's look at the One X Player Mini Pro. I guess this is why they call this the Mini, even though it's not the smallest device on the market. This is why they call this the Mini, because they're comparing it to this giant beast of a machine. <laughs> now if you look at this compared to this, you would consider this to be a mini device because look at that. This is 7 inches versus 8.4 inches. Now let's look at it um, versus the tried and true, the people's champion. Here is the Steam Deck. Good old Steam Deck. Look at that. Steam Deck is rather large, but it is also a 7 inch um, 16 by 10 display, so same aspect ratio. These screens are pretty much the same size, but this is 800p versus 1200p. So here we get a, a size comparison between the One X Player Mini Pro and the Steam Deck. Now let's compare that to the, the Loki Max. It does look pretty small compared to the Steam Deck, I must say, and that just goes to um, the benefit of portability. So if you want a portable handheld, then this is really um, your go-to device. Okay, so now that we've covered the um, the size, the design, let's talk about the ergonomics between these two devices because that's going to be very important when we are considering devices that are of this size. We want to you know determine which one has the better ergonomics because we need something to hold on to. So let's just look at the um, the grip on these devices, and I will say they both have pretty great grips. And right off the bat, I have to. Um, uh, give an applause to AYN for the Loki Max because these grips are very good. If you can see um, this grip here, this sort of hump that you have on the back here, it is very prominent in comparison to the actual thickness of the device. So my main thing when considering the ergonomics is really the relation between the thickness of the actual body of the device and the thickness of the grip because no matter how thick the device is, if this grip isn't larger in comparison to the actual thickness of the device is not going to be much for your hand to hold on to. If it was just all one thickness, it would be held on to like a, a brick and your hand isn't really shaped like a brick. It likes to curve and grip like this. So you see this sort of shape here, this hook shape. That's what you're looking for in a handheld device when you consider the grip. And I will say that they both have a great um, hook uh, grip that you can sort of hang your hand onto. So as far as ergonomics goes, I will say they do both feel very good because of that um, that grip on the back. They do feel very good to hold in the hand. They are curved in all the right ways. There's no sort of sharp edges digging into your hand. I will say that you can pretty much play both of these for an extended period of time without worrying about the ergonomics. But I will say that the, the Loki Max just seems to stand out because it has such a great grip for its size. You know, being so small and having such a great grip, it really makes you feel like it has great ergonomics, which it actually does. Um, so as far as ergonomics goes, I gotta say, I give a slight edge to the Loki Max because it has pretty much the same ergonomic feel as the um, larger devices, but it's in a much smaller package. So that does mean something because it means you don't have to sacrifice ergonomics while having this um, you know, small package. So I, I won't say that it's actually miles better or is not really much better for ergonomics but the fact that it is the same ergonomics for such a small device i have to give it just a nod because if you want a small device with great ergonomics then this is going to be sort of the one to beat in my opinion as far as ergonomics goes just look at that grip and it's not so thick so you know you have a lot to hold on to so now we spoke about ergonomics let's talk about controls because you're holding the device but how does it actually feel to interact with the device so as far as controls go i will say right off the bat that the one s player mini pro has some great controls so we have hall effect triggers hall effect sticks the buttons feel good nice and clicky so everything that you need it to be is there the d-pad is all right i will say it's probably um not my favorite d-pad but it is passable you get all your directions here you can sort of roll it as well so all the buttons are acceptable i will say that the joysticks are on the small side and we're going to see just how small they are when we compare it to the 
Loki Max. So the Loki Max feels good in the hand. The triggers, everything feels good. I will say that the the bumpers here are pretty small, but um, it was something I had to get used to at first because I'm used to uh, like a wider bumper. But I get you can you don't ever like sort of miss it or you don't ever feel like you don't have enough to press. It is it was just something to get used to because it is um so much like thinner than other devices as you can see here. The bumper is much thinner than other devices, but I will say it makes up for it with these joysticks. Look at the size of these joysticks, you guys. I just have this one here, so you can sort of like see the size. Look at the size of the joysticks. It's so much bigger. The joysticks are so much larger. This is like a full Xbox size joystick um, in this small package here. So I will say this is like almost Nintendo Switch size, and this is like full um, Xbox size. Let's just um, measure this here. Measure the size so you guys can get an idea of the difference. So the Loki Max is 16 millimeters, and the Mini Pro is around 15 millimeters. So a full millimeter um, larger. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is a lot when you're talking about these um, handheld devices here. So the controls are very similar as far as the feel, um, but the joysticks get a huge win on the AYN low-key max and also the d-pad it feels good but has a nice click to it so I get the d-pad a win so the joysticks and the d-pad um, do win in my book but the buttons are pretty much the same um, on both the devices they do feel very clicky very responsive the buttons on the mini pro are slightly larger so you may like that but they do all sort of like feel the same this has to be the best joysticks on a six inch device um, that I've ever tested here. So that's definitely great to see. Now I, I have to sort of take a point away as far as controls go for these back buttons. And I'll explain that why I take a point away right now because I really need AYN to see this. These back buttons are not um, like programmable. They are R3 and L3. So the same as if you press in the joysticks. And I will keep asking for them to allow us to remap these buttons because L3 and R3, it, it would be better if it was just no button here because there's so little scenarios where you need to press L3 and R3 and you can't already just press the joysticks in. I don't know um, why they made it L3 and R3, but I have yet to find a game where I want to press L3 and R3 and I wouldn't just press the joysticks. Normally, I would use a back button for one of these face buttons so I can keep my finger on the joystick while still being able to press one of these buttons. So I would have it like A or B or X or Y, something like that, so I can keep my hand on the joystick. So if I'm moving and looking at the same time, I can press that back button to jump or slide or dash or dodge or something like that in a game. I don't ever wanna press L3 and R3 with the back button because my finger is already on the joystick. So that's just my mini rant. I'm gonna keep ranting about it until they allow us to remap it. They said they were working on it. I emailed them. I emailed them. <laughs> they said they would work on it, but I'm not sure if they actually will. But that's just something I would rather to be no back buttons than to be L3 and R3. Um, so I take a point away for that. I don't know, call me crazy. But if you have a game, put it in the comments if you have a game where you would actually want to press L3 and R3 with back buttons instead of just pressing the um, joysticks. So leave a comment for that. Now let's talk about the software on these devices. Let's talk about um, the way that you uh, interface with the, um, the software that's built in that allows you to op uh, operate the system and, and adjust things like you know TDP and other things like that on the system. So they both have a dedicated button that if you press it, brings up this um, you know software here to adjust things like you can adjust the TDP, you can adjust the um, the GPU and CPU um, frequency and power load. Um, so they are very similar. I will say that the the one on the One X Player Mini Pro it does allow you to navigate it with the the joystick here. So that is something that I will consider because it does allow you to to navigate it with the joystick, which is an amazing feature to have. That's not something that the Loki Max allows you to do, so you can't navigate this with the joystick at all. You have to pretty much use the touch screen. And also this um, this circular TDP slider, I wish it was just like a horizontal slider going across, like every other you know handheld device has a horizontal slider. I think that would be much um, easier and more accurate to, uh, to use here. 
but it does allow you to adjust your TDP. This one goes all the way up to 34 watts compared to 28 watts on the One Play Mini Pro. But once you're at 34 watts, you're not really going to see much improvement in performance. And at that point, you're just eating your battery up. So they do allow you to adjust some of the similar things. But there are a little bit more features in the um, the One X Player software. Like you can adjust the um, the on-screen overlay. It has a built-in on-screen overlay you can adjust. You can also adjust the um, the fan much easier. Um, I think it's just easy because you can use the controller. They have similar um, functions. Like you can adjust the RGB. You can adjust the um, the brightness. You can adjust the um, the volume. So pretty similar. Um, features but you do have more control uh, with the one x player uh, software and you can use the controller you also have this front end software that manages all your games that puts them in this um this game launcher here so that is good to see you can manage all of the games here it puts them here automatically and adds the art so that is definitely a good feature because you can have all your games in one place and you don't have to worry about if it's from Steam or if it's from Epic, if it's from Xbox, it's all gonna be um, compiled into here without you having to do anything and that is just one press away. So you can just hold the button and it's gonna bring it up. Also, I like this keyboard button that is a controller keyboard that you can bring it up and you can even move it around. It's also touch. That's not something that the, the Loki Max uh, has built in. Now, performance. Let's talk about performance between these two devices. Now, they're both running the um, the 6800U from AMD, um, but the only difference is that the One X Player Mini Pro has 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the Loki Max has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so twice the um, RAM on the uh, One X Player Mini Pro. But this has six gigabytes dedicated to um, video memory, and right now I have this set to four gigabytes of video memory. It comes from the factory of three gigabytes of video memory, but you are able to go into the BIOS to um, adjust that, and you can even make it eight gigabytes if you're feeling crazy. But right now I have this set to um, four gigabytes of VRAM. So the performance is uh, pretty much the same on these. You get a slight boost in performance um, just by having a slightly more RAM and VRAM on the One X Player Mini Pro, but the performance is going to be um, pretty even. Let me just do one benchmark here just so you can get an idea of the performance, and then we'll um, get to the last thing and get you guys out of here because this video is pretty long. Let's just do one benchmark and then uh, we'll just wrap this up. Okay, so the results are in. We ran the benchmark at 25 watts um, on both devices, 1080p low settings, and pretty similar. Uh, 34 average FPS here and 35 average FPS here. So pretty much the same performance. I wouldn't expect much different performance. Depending on the game, you may get one or two frames more on here. Uh, depending on the game, you may get you know one or five, three frames more on here. So I wouldn't expect more um, uh, performance from either of these devices. Now, let's talk about the battery. So when I started this test, I had both of these at 100%. Now let's look at the battery. We have 64% on the uh, Loki Max and 71% on the uh, One X Player Mini Pro. So just slightly more on the One X Player Mini Pro, so around 5%. I would say you should get around average 5% um, in this test we're seeing around um, 6 to 7% but I will say you should get around you know 5 to 7% more battery on the One X Player Mini Pro but anyway yeah that's just uh, this test and overview of these two devices um, good comparison I think if you want something that's um, portable these are two great options I know they have the 6800U, but that's still a great chip if you can find this for a great price. I think these are worth um, picking up just to have a small device uh, for on-the-go gaming. Anyway, I'll check you guys in the next one. Leave a comment down below of what you want to see next. Any test you want to see between these devices, I have a number of devices here. So yeah, leave a comment down below of what you want to see next. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.